Hey, hey everybody and welcome back to the board meeting. Today we're doing another R&R, reviews and ratings of all the different games that I've been playing in the last week or two. Whether they're solo games, cooperative games, competitive game, card games, doesn't matter, we're looking at them all. And we've got another huge haul of games. I think there's 17 games on the docket to talk about today. And luckily for me, most of the games I've been playing lately have been pretty good. Most of them. Some of them not so good. But let's just jump right into it with my first one, Cockroach Poker. Cockroach Poker is a bluffing game with a reverse set collecting mechanic. Players start with a big hand of insect cards and are trying to bluff their way into getting the other players to take these cards. When a player slides you a card, they say what creature is on that card. They can also lie what is on that card. Then the player receiving the card says if they think that player is telling the truth or not. If they are correct, that card gets laid in front of the player that handed them the card. If they are wrong, it goes in front of themselves. The game ends when one person has four of the same cards in front of them, and then they are eliminated and they have lost the game, and everybody else wins. This is a fun little party game that I would give a 7. Plus, it's a small, inexpensive card game, so it has room on most people's shelves. Let's move on to the next game, Everdell. Everdell is a worker placement game with some of my favorite art in any game. You start out with only two workers, but then as the game goes on, you get more workers each season. So you are collecting all these resources to then build some cards. A lot of the cards sync with other cards that will allow you to build those cards for free then. It is an interesting game that at the beginning it feels like you are barely doing anything for a season. And by the end you are making tons of moves. This game gets an 8 rating from me, and the solo AI is very easy where it just rotates around the board each season blocking certain spots and cards, so it also gets an 8 for its solo rating as well. This is a game that I keep liking more and more each play. Taking a look now at Gore Chosen. Gore Chosen is a simple skirmish game from Games Workshop where four players will be thrown into an arena to battle it out gladiator style. Each character has different abilities and will attack in different manners, but everything will ultimately come down to dice rolling and how players are able to defend themselves. It is a relatively fast game that can be taught pretty quickly as well. I enjoyed my play of it, but not sure I'd want to break it out a ton. I gave it a 6.5 rating, and as most games workshop stuff, the miniatures are fairly well done. Let's move to Arctic Scavengers now. Arctic Scavengers is a deck building game where you are the leader of a small tribe and you are against the other players' tribes in a fight for the very scarce resources. Each card has several symbols from shovels to medicine, which will help you build and search for new, better cards to improve your deck, including cards with more tribe members. The player with the most tribe members at the end of the game wins. I thought this was an interesting game, but I did only get to play it once for the first time last week. So my initial rating is a 7, and I'd really like the chance to get to play it a few more times. Now let's check out the very popular Blood Rage. Blood Rage is an area control dudes on a map game. There are three different rounds in this game, and each round you will be drafting different cards that will help you accomplish your goals. The cards could either give you more power during a fight, bonus points for controlling certain territories, draft legendary creatures into your clan, or even give you points for dying in a battle. The map also shrinks over the game as each round a region will be destroyed and wiped off the map. This is a good game that rewards people who have played it many times. It gets an 8 rating from me, and I am looking forward to more content coming for this game. Next game up is Cartographers. Cartographers is a flip and write game where players get a map and will have to fill different polyomino shaped terrain into their map. How you score will change every single game, as each game you pull out four different random scoring conditions for you to aim for. This is one of my all-time favorite roll and rate type games, and I love how each game is filled with a unique, different puzzle you are trying to solve based on goal cards and the cards that are drawn each round. This game gets a multiplayer and solo rating of 8.5 because the game is pretty much the same except for how ambush cards are resolved. Moving on to The Joker. The Joker is a social deduction game where players are secretly given one of the villains of the DC world as a role. Each round, players will be picking one of the actions they will get to do, whether it's killing off a certain role character or placing money in their envelopes. And these envelopes will be getting passed around and getting 
put positive and negative cards into them. I guess I just don't get the chaotic randomness of this game. I thought the gameplay was just bad and the production value was even worse. This gets a 4 rating from me and I have no desire to play this game again, even with a theme I thought could have been really cool. Checking out now one of my all time favorite games with Architects of the West Kingdom. I broke out Architects this week for the first time in a while for a solo game. Architects is a worker placement game that unlike most worker placement games usually doesn't prohibit others from going to spots. You can put an unlimited number of workers on a spot and each worker you have on a spot makes that spot's action that much more powerful. You will be collecting resources and building different buildings and working on the cathedral. You can even take other players workers off the board and send them to jail. I love this game and it gets a 10 rating from me and the solo mode is pretty good as well getting an 8.5 rating just because I enjoy this game at a higher player count and the solo mode emulates a two player game but it still does that pretty well. Moving on to Imhotep the Duel. Imhotep the Duel is the two player version of Imhotep, a game I really like. In this one you will be placing your meeples in a grid system and will be offloading the boat's goods where they will be given to the players based on where their meeples are on the grid. The different things you will be offloading will score you points in a variation of ways. If you like Imhotep, there is no reason you wouldn't like this one as well. They are very similar, but yet different enough that I think it's okay to own both versions. I give this an 8 rating, which is the same I rate the original Imhotep. Let's check out now Back to the Future, Back in Time. A few weeks ago I talked about a different Back to the Future game, Dice Through Time. Today we talk about another one with Back to the Future Back in Time, which is also another cooperative dice allocation game. You'll be rolling dice and using the symbols rolled to help Marty's parents fall in love, to fight Biff, to complete objective cards to get more powers, and to move the DeLorean. Players win if by the last round of the game Marty's parents are in love and the DeLorean is so far along on its track. I found this to be a fun co-op experience giving it a 7 rating which is a little bit better than the other Back to the Future game. Moving on to the small card game Ecosystem. Ecosystem is a drafting game about building your own cohesive ecosystem that will score you the most points. You play this game over two different rounds and during each round players will be passing around cards and drafting them and placing them into their own ecosystems. There are a dozen different cards and each card will score differently based upon where they are put into your ecosystem. I was expecting this to be an okay game but I end up really liking it with an 8 rating. I love that each game you play can be played completely different with different strategies. Now checking out an older game with Citadels. Citadels is a sort of city building game that has roll cards that are being drafted each round. Each roll card will give you some ability ranging from getting more money for certain buildings in your city to actually killing other players for that round. The player with the most building points in the end wins the game. I originally didn't like this game, but it has grown on me over a few plays. It gets a 6.5 rating and I wouldn't mind playing it a couple more times still. Moving on to a much bigger game in Dungeon Pets. Dungeon Pets is a game I've wanted to play for a very long time. This is a worker placement game about getting these monster pets and having them grow until you decide to sell them. You will have to make sure to feed them, play with them, and even clean up their poop. This is a cute game and I only have gotten to play this once so my initial thoughts were that I enjoyed it and I really like the cute artwork and theme, but I do wish there were more spots to go and options. It gets a 7 initial rating from me and I would really like to play this a few more times to see where that rating bounces to whether it is up or down. Let's keep going with Hadrian's Wall. Hadrian's Wall is a flip and write game of sorts except this ramps up the complexity and options unlike any other game I've seen in this genre. This is a massive combo game with hundreds of different boxes to cross off in the game. Think of games like Ganshan Clever and Fleet the Dice game and multiply that by a few. So many of the boxes you end up crossing off will then give you some other reward which then you use to cross off even more boxes and so on. I played this a half a dozen times this week and I still haven't explored all the options yet. 
This gets a 9 rating from me and would have made my top 10 roll and write games if I had played this when I made that list. I will say this is 100% a solitaire game that if you're playing multiplayer, you're basically just playing a game around each other with almost no interactions. But it still is really good. Continuing to move on now with Mandala. Mandala is a two-player only card game that the board is actually printed on a cloth. There are two Mandala circles on the cloth and the player can either play their colored cards in the center or on their side of the cloth. Once all six colors have been played in a circle, the player with the most cards on their side of that circle gets to start drafting cards from the center and will be used for scoring. I played this game a dozen times last week and this was a really fun two player game that I gave an eight rating to and would be a great game for anyone looking for some good two player games to add to their collection. Now on to another two player game with Jaipur. Jaipur is a two player only card game about set collecting. I used to play the app for this game all the time but I played the physical game for the first time last week. You will be trying to collect certain colored cards and then we'll be selling these cards and some are worth more than others. If you happen to sell sets that have three, four, or even five in them, you will also get bonus tokens which will give you extra points. I enjoyed this app and I do enjoy the physical game as well, giving it a seven rating and one that could be broken out fairly easily from time to time. Moving on to our last game, Kokoro, Avenue of the Kadama. Kokoro is a flip and write game about drawing paths and trying to connect worms and flowers to the sanctuaries. Each round a different sanctuary card is drawn and you will be trying to connect the features to that sanctuary. You must beat your score from the previous round or you score zero for that round and each round you score zero it is negative five points. This is similar to a different flip and write game Trails of Tucana except this is quite a bit simpler. This gets a 7 rating from me, and it might actually have gotten a higher rating if I'd never played Tucana before, just because I like Tucana a bit more than this one. And that will wrap up this Reviews and Ratings episode and adjourn this meeting. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think of some of these games, and maybe if you had some different experiences for me with these games. Either way, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to like and subscribe to see more weekly content from me at the board meeting in the future. I hope you all have an amazing day and take care everyone.